kind of a day when you don't want to come too soon because they're sitting on aluminum seats here. <laughs> you see the weather forecast. It's already snowing in some of the outer areas, and of course the higher elevations of the Rockies have had a goodly amount of snow already this year. We're ready to play football in the Rockies, winding it up for 1986 here on ABC in our presentation of CFA College Football. This is a game scheduled earlier in the year, but in order to uh, get a television date, Lavelle Edwards, the head coach at BYU since 1972, and Fisher DeBerry in his third year at Air Force agreed to this change. And if we get through the day without snow, the weather would have been a gift because it was truly glorious here in the afternoon yesterday. The temperature getting up. Oh, my goodness, in the middle 50s, it felt like even warmer in certain areas. Air Force won the opening toss, deferred to the second half, and will kick off to Brigham Young. Chris Blasey will kick it off, a sophomore out of Midland, Michigan, for Air Force, number 13. Mike O'Brien and Robert Parker will be the return people for Brigham Young. They're both averaging just about 24 yards per return. O'Brien 32, Parker 43, and the game's on. It's O'Brien. And the sophomore from Chicago comes up near the 25, and the boom's lowered there by Gary Kilmer, a cornerback for the Air Force. The backs and receivers for BYU, and uh, Hemuli uh, is uh, going to be a prominent man in this ballgame. There's no way in the world you're not going to see him a lot today, but Mark Bellini has a history of making big plays for BYU. He averages better than 17 yards per catch from his wide receiver position. And stepping in for the opening snap is a sophomore, Bob Jensen, at quarterback. He is from Fillmore, Utah. And hit behind the line of scrimmage, a ripping tackle by nose guard John Steed. Robert Parker never had a chance. Steed came through virtually untouched. You see, they pulled a guard. He came through without a blocker in front of him and just lowered the boom on him. And the loss is back just inside the 20-yard line. So it's a loss of just about five yards on the play. Parker getting the opening carry instead of Hayboudi. the top. Back goes Jensen. A little dump off pass goes to Hebuli. And Hebuli will come to the line of scrimmage and pick up a yard and that'll do it. Up front for Brigham Young. The weights are reflected there. Handley the tight end. Good sized fella. But BYU is a big football team and you'll normally see this on a team that throws the ball a lot. They need that hook up in front to take care of the quarterback. The ball is on the 21 yard line where it is third down and about 14. 13 and a half, if you like. And it reads pass here. Jensen is back. Has some time, but the ball is tipped as it is thrown away, and John Steed makes his second big play of the opening possession. He got a hand on it. Well, they've been playing that song since we got here at 10 o'clock this morning. We will rock you, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Air Force comes out with a very strong initial defensive effort. Pat Thompson is in to do the punting, a sophomore from Lombok, California. BYU is a relatively young team as they're on the field now. Deep to return for Air Force, Tom Rotello. Ball does not turn over for him. Rotello comes up, makes a fair catch at the 47-yard line of Air Force. And so the Falcons opening possession, they start from almost perfect field position, the middle of the field. Munafo and Evans are the two running backs that will be very important for the Air Force wishbone. Evans is described as a rolling ball of muscle and Munafo a slashing runner. Evans is the plow horse. Munafo is 5'11", 188 pounds. He was raised as a quarterback, moved to defensive back. They finally found a home for him as a running back. And the Falcons go to work now out of the wishbone formation. Ball is pitched out to Monafo. And Monafo is thrown out of bounds, hit out of bounds, and that gets the penalty flag. It's going to be a face mask, I think, Keith. 
Rodney Thomas was the defensive player involved and in trying to get to the man just reached out and the face mask was there and he grabbed it. Face mask on the defense on the run. Five yards. The referee is Guy Gibbs. Umpires John Bradley, Bill Malone, linesman. David Hertema is the line judge. Don Day, field judge. Side judge is James Saracino and Ray Hale is the back judge. Here's the face mask. You can see he goes up high to hit the tackler on the sidelines and just gets his hand caught up in there. We see more face mask penalties in the last three That's weeks true. more than I can remember. All of them inadvertent. I don't think that maybe one has been a 15-yarder, but all the rest have been five. And that five-yard penalty moves the ball over to the 46-yard line of BYU at its first down for Air Force. Let's go, Tyler! Let's go, Tyler! Berger's almost got across the neutral zone. The pitch goes the other way, carrying is Robert Krause. And Krause, a sophomore out of Greenwood, Tennessee, is brought down by Shane Shumway. The Air Force offensive front, and an interesting fellow to watch if you like to watch numbers. Number 66, name is Findall, Chris Findall. They think he is the, perhaps their best offensive lineman at 6'3", 255. But the point is, he's going to be lining up all day and jousting with Sean Knight and Jason Buck, the two big defensive tackles for BYU, who combined last year for 20 tackles in the game. Eric Faison, a freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, in the ball game at the left halfback position. The ball is pitched late to Mark Munafo, and Munafo, who is a senior from Huron, Ohio, is brought down by Andy Katoa, and he's going to have a first down for the Air Force Falcon. Here's the defensive front now. Buck and Sean Knight are the defensive tackles. Knight 6'6", 285. Jason Buck 6'6", and he told me yesterday he weighs about 260, so he's down just a bit. Perhaps the best tackle combination we've seen all year. Two very strong, outstanding athletes. Buck, of course, the winner of the Outland Trophy this year. The top award for the big guys in the trenches. The pitch goes the other way, carrying number 27, the freshman Faison. And Faison is hunted down and brought down just about the 35, which is the line of scrimmage. Richard Hobbs, a junior from Shelley, Idaho, made the tackle, and Faison gets up a bit slowly. Working on his hamstring area. When it's this cold, the muscles tighten up, and you come out with that first, his first carry of the day. Try to stretch out around that corner, and you have a tendency to snag that hamstring, pull it a little bit. Call it second down and nine, and Krause is in replacing Faison in the Air Force first ball. Quarterback pitches it back, and coming this way is Monaco. Inside the 30, down to about the 28 for the Falcons. They play on real grass here and the stadium is beautifully conditioned by the stadium manager Tony Guerrero. Tony in your 25 years he is actually the senior employee at the academy. They had almost a foot of snow here last week. He kept the field in very good condition with thin plastic field covers and a heater six inches under the ground. Third down and four for the Falcons. Coming this way with it, penalty flag as Monaco tries to weak side it. Gets it down to about the 26, but there's a penalty flag to consider here. Holding Air Force. Air Force runs the ball at a 6-1 to one ratio, six runs for every pass, but Air Force powerful running game has been stymied at times late in the year. I think we should note too, too, as Air Force moves down the field that in 33 games with Fisher DeBerry, the head coach at Air Force, the Falcons have scored first in 24 of them. Holding on the offense till third down. He's had quite good success. In fact, quite remarkable success for a service academy, but Using this particular kind of an offense, you can sometimes get a ball game, get a win with lesser talent than the other side because of the type of blocking that is required. Greg Johnson is in the backfield now carrying. That is uh, Krause. And Krause gets around the corner down to about the 24-yard line before he is brought down. It is Greg Johnson, the freshman from San Antonio. Carrying. How about that? A new wrinkle, Keith. Krause comes around the corner on the halfback pass. 
and Kraus throws the ball to Johnson. Now that's the wrinkle that Fisher DeBerry was telling us about yesterday. He's had a pretty good week. They've had time to work on some new things, and he wants to throw them at, at BYU. Now here comes Kraus. You don't suspect him to throw. All of a sudden, he just lobs it out there. It's not pretty. It's just effective. And Greg Johnson gets the first down. That's one of the few passes you'll ever see with no rotation. Back to the familiar stuff. Johnson carrying the ball, trying to get to the corner, down at the 20. Pick up of close to four yards. Rodney Thomas getting his third tackle of the game. Had a long talk with Greg Johnson yesterday. He's only a freshman. He was excited to meet you and come out and have an opportunity just to dress for this game, much less play. But he says he thinks the Air Force is fun. They went to basic training way back in June. Next summer, they get to go to the survival test where they just dump them into the Rockies for a week, and they've got to live off the land. That's fun. <laughs> for you. Jim Tamalo is the quarterback for the Falcons. The ball is at the 20. Second down and six and a half. Tamalo keeps the ball, turns inside with it, gets a couple on the carry, and he is brought down by Reagan Hansen out of American Fork, Utah. There's a penalty flag thrown by somebody in the defensive secondary, probably the back judge. And here's the call. Personal foul against the defense. Rodney Thomas is involved in it. Boy, here it is right here, too. Now, this is way after the play is over. Now, here comes, look at this. Rodney Thomas, the defensive back, just throws that high elbow. Now, that's the type of thing that's been getting suspensions from Pete Rozelle in the NFL. Tyler Barth was the Air Force Falcon player involved in the play. He started to retaliate and then withdrew when he realized that they were visible and there was an official standing right there. Foul. Personal foul on the defense. First down. And so it's imposed against Brigham Young, and the Air Force Falcons will have a first and goal at the BYU 9. Kraus, Manafo, and Evans lined up behind Tamalo. Tamalo pitches the ball back. Look out for the halfback pass. It is thrown out of bounds. Coming across, Mark Manafo trying to get enough footing to plant and throw. Couldn't do it. And uh, the play was bad, really, from the very beginning. That's a, tough, again. that's a tough pass to throw, though. He's rolling to his left. He's right-handed and has to square up to make the pass. Everybody was covered. But again, Manapo was raised as a quarterback, so he can't throw the football. Here's the penalty call. Ignore the flag. So they ignore it. Since it was an incomplete, uncatchable pass, the ball really was out of bounds almost from the time... Uh, that uh, Manafo let it go. Second down and goal for Air Force. Barth comes out of the game and Frank Martini goes in. As Al told you, one Martini for Air Force, one for BYU. That's all you get. A double Martini. <laughs> that handoff inside to the fullback. And Pat Evans, a 200-pound senior from Pittsburgh, Mississippi, bangs in for a couple down to about the seven. You mentioned early, Keith, this matchup had national championship implications in the early 80s. Still has some significance in that the winner of this game earns a berth in the Freedom Bowl against UCLA. The loser will enjoy the bowl season at home on television. Third and goal from the seven for Air Force. They ride it inside, and the play is good to about the two with Pat Evans, the fullback, carrying. And it brings up a fourth down and probably the kicking unit for Air Force. Pat Evans is one of what the Air Force calls the five aces, five guys who excel as leaders, setbacks, athletes. Here he is just banging his way inside. He's the, the plow horse on this offense small version of a John Riggins type. As a sophomore, Evans ran 1,015 yards, including five games of over 100 yards. The field goal try will be from the nine with the tees down, plus 10, 19 yards for Chris Blasey. And he got it. And Air Force gets on the board first. That has been their pattern all along. They take a 3-0 lead at 8.16 to go first quarter. 
You see the cadet wing seated across the way from us. Decked out in their blue. In that drive, the Air Force had six different people running the ball, and there were two halfback passes. Quarterback did not get into the air game. Lazy will kick off. O'Brien and Parker are deep. Kick will carry it down to the goal line, and here comes Parker. That was almost a face mask grab there. You saw the Air Force man come down and make a high grab for him. E.J. Jones almost got dinged with a face mask ball there. If you start reaching high these days, the way these masks protrude away from the helmet, it's hard not to get a hold of it. But uh, he just is, missed it. This is a great play, though, Keith. He comes down as the outside lane man. He's got containment. He saw that it was going up the middle, so he just broke it inside and took the shoulder pads and forced him down. And so if BYU will start from the 22-yard line, and Jensen will throw on first down. Well, he won't either. Good coverage in the secondary by Air Force. And Jensen only a sophomore, and he hasn't had much playing time. And finally, he was corralled by Chad Hemming. The Air Force defense, and the guy I think you'll enjoy watching today, two of them, 67 Mackey and 45 Rotello. Perry Mackey, last year at a game we did here against Notre Dame, had 28 tackles. Rotello does everything, including return kicks. Mackey also blocked a possible game-winning field goal. That's right. Second down, the ball back at the 14-yard line, and Jensen rolls away from the pressure, gets his pass off downfield. Wide open is Mark Bellini, and Bellini goes down to the Air Force 29-yard line for a BYU first down. Mark Bellini, he is a senior from San Leandro, California, 6 feet 185, and an exciting football player. Working on Mike Tolliver, a senior. Now watch, he looks for the football here as he does an out pattern and then takes it back up. Well, he just leaves Tolliver there. Then the ball was nicely thrown. Bellini is an outstanding acrobatic type receiver. He's got 4-4 speed, and that time he just ran a perfect pass route. That is the longest BYU pass completion of the season, 57 yards. Bellini out. Jim Edwards is in right now. And the handoff goes to number 43, Robert Parker. And Parker will have the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Chad Hennings and E.J. Jones are the people on the tackle for the Falcons. I'm sure the cadets would like to go to Anaheim and have some fun over the holidays at the Freedom Bowl, and that's the word the winner of this game will go. If there should be a tie, I am told, BYU will get the bid. Second down and 10 for the Cougars. Jensen hands the ball to Haymuli, and Haymuli will pick up two down, maybe three, to the 26. It'll be third down and seven, and let's join Al Troutwick. Keith, this is a very important electrical switch at the stadium. You and Tim were talking about the field condition. Well, if you just pull... now nah, we won't do it. Let me tell you what that switch does. It turns on heating coils under the field. They're about three to five feet underneath the ground. They go the entire length of the field, and they keep the field temperature at 48 degrees, so things stay very nice and clean. And you can see this grass pretty green for this late in the year in December in Colorado. Back to you. Very firm footing. It helps the rooting system is what it does. Computer grass really takes the root. Third down and seven, and Jensen is back. Pressure's coming, passes away, thrown too high, almost intercepted. Slid off the fingers of Terry Mackey, the senior from Libby, Montana, and it was John Steed, that nose guard, that was pestering the quarterback. You just have that feeling that Air Force is going to have an interception today. They've had at least one interception in 23 of the last 26 games. This time, Mackey, I think, may have seen headlines. The ball was right there in his hands, bounced up into his stomach before it finally hit the ground. He's a player, though. He's your kind of guy. He loves to fish, hunt, and trap. It's fourth down now, and during the course of the day, we're going to be showing you some of the outstanding plays from games that we have telecast this year. Field goal try coming here by Leonard Chitty, a junior from Riverton, Utah. And it's good. 43-yard field goal by Leonard Chitty. And so BYU answers with three, and we're all even at 5.32 to go first quarter. Chris German 
will kick it off for BYU. Tom Rotello and Robert Klaus. All the deep people for Air Force. A 3-3 ball game here in the first quarter. High hanger. That's into the end zone. Two yards to Rotello, and he's coming. He danced around just a little bit before he picked his crease and got it out to the 24. And the Falcons come back to the attack. Tamalo rides it, leaves it out to Manafo, and Manafo gets it. Just over the 25 for a yard, yard and a half pickup. And again, it's Rodney Thomas, the junior from Ontario, playing that right corner for BYU, who gets him out of bounds. So far, Keith, this game has gone true to form. We told you that Air Force scored first in 24 of the 33 games with Fisher DeBerry as head coach. Air Force has not been shut out in 75 straight games, and yet they haven't shut anybody out since 1977 defensively. Call it second down and about eight. And the handoff goes to the straight-ahead power man out of the wishbone, Mark Monafo. He runs into Reagan Hansen, and the mark is at just over the 27. So they're looking at third and a long six. The forecast in this part of the country is for snow late today, but it's brighter now than it has been for some time. So we're hoping we make it through without too much snow. Break the bone now, and Tamalo sprints out, and whistles have stopped the play. It's against Air Force. Army at halftime, leading Navy 6-0. Army with a win can uh, get the service trophy. Air Force beat Navy, lost to Army. Dead ball, delayed game. Offense, still third down. Larry Lacewell's Arkansas State Ball Club is rolling up a lot of points late in the season. Put some points on the board in that one, didn't he? Augustana, subject to the feature you saw in college football today. Here's Tamalo rolling it right. Gets away from the pressure, turns the corner. He'll be short of the first down. He's belted out at about the 31 by Corey Rasmussen. A strong safety for the Cougars. Interesting to see what Air Force did that time. They came out in what they call their flex bone. In other words, rather than the true wishbone formation, they took their backs and they put them out on the wing. They flexed them outside in the slot formation. Mark Simon into punt now for Air Force on fourth down and four. Led the nation last year, 47-plus. Kicking at 7,000 feet. The ball does have a little carry, but he's got a leg. Look at that thing. It's a rocket. And it ricochets off Mike O'Brien inside the five. He covers it at the three. Don't tell me about altitude. That would have been a heck of a kick anywhere at sea level. Simon has landed 41 punts inside the opponent's 20-yard line. He has a 44-yard average. His longest punt, 83 yards. That was against Houston. And talk about the air, 7,000 feet. That's where we are. This one went 64 yards for Simon. Last year's All-American, again, All-Conference. BYU starts at their own three with Bruce Hansen in the backfield along with Hamuli. And it's Hamuli with the ball to the line of scrimmage and stopped there by a swarming Air Force defense trying to pin him down and hold him. A. Mooley needs only nine yards rushing to surpass the career rushing record at BYU held by Jeff Blank. He's got four today, and I mean he's working overtime to get him. He's 5'11", 216 pounds. He has the thickest thighs I've seen all year. As well as we're doing the, the best seat of the year, the best player of the year, he's got the thickest thighs of the year. Now we've got a penalty flag thrown by a linesman, and we may have an illegal substitution, something to do with a substitution as one of the Cougars was late coming off and going on. So let's see what the referee says about it. Well, I didn't hear him. I could read lips and say that he had something to do with the substitution. So it's half the distance to the goal line. They're just a yard and a half away from the promised land right now. So the Cougars have been Illegal substitution. 
a white player came in and left before a play was over. Still second down. There's your definition. It is second down and about 11 and a half. Sophomore Bob Jensen is the quarterback. Carrying the ball is Hanson, Bruce Hanson, a senior out of American Fork. And he finds some daylight, gets over the left side to the nine. That's a pickup of seven and a half. And uh, all things considered, that gives him a little breathing room. Here's Al. Keith, these cadets find the strangest costumes to dress up in. Here are two Stay Puft Marshmallow sophomores, but they're really not very good at football. Let me show you why. Gentlemen, it just doesn't work. Reminds me of Tim in about three years. <laughs> to I I'd leave the barbecued ribs alone. Third down and four. <laughs> We're going to start this, are we? <laughs> Carrying is Haymuli. And Lucky Haymuli is over the 10 to the 11. Well, I wouldn't have said anything if you hadn't told me that you brought two right shoes. Two shoes for the right foot, none for the left. Two of my greatest feats. <laughs> Just proves that two rights don't make a left. In all my entire days. I saw you grazing around that salad bar last night. In the front, Pat Thompson. He's standing in the end zone for BYU. Rotello is deep back at midfield. No wind to speak of. The kick is up. Good kick. Hanging. Drives Rotello back to the 45. Fair catch. The Falcons will have the ball. That was a 44-yarder. There's your time remaining in the first quarter in a 3-3 ball game. And Air Force, which has enjoyed good field position all day, has the ball first down at their own 45. BYU's been struggling offensively. You know, last week, the Cougars were limited to only 167 yards total offense, a record low in the 1980s. Jim Tamalo in there at quarterback. They break the ball again. Tamalo rides it to the fullback on a belly, throws the ball to the sideline, to the pass is incomplete, intended for Mark Munafo. Ball is hard and slick in 26 degree weather, especially at 7,000 feet. Comes on the reverse, number one, Tyrone Jeffcoat. Jeffcoat will have eight yards. They're looking at third and about two. He almost got loose. Richard Hobbs finally got him on the ground. Jeffcoat's a burner, a senior from Bourne, Massachusetts. Of course, the Air Force football players, like the cadet wing, come from all over the country. Come from all over, town, the, big town. all over the world, too. Jeff Coat attended Naples high, American High School in Italy. Then we're coming back over to this country. Third down, two and a half. The ball again on the BYU side of the field, and they take it inside to Pat Evans. And the Mississippi fullback is down to about the 45, and if they are going to mark it on the 45, he's going to be uh, most of a yard short of a first down. So now, Fisher DeBerry has got a decision to make. One of the toughest defensive units ever at BYU, and he won't gamble on it. He sends the kicking team on the field. Fisher is from Chiraw, South Carolina. His hometown. Here's the punt by Simon. Spinning spiral that hits right at the goal line and is just in the end zone. He was trying to knock it out of bounds, and probably within two yards of killing it on the one. 57 seconds remaining now in the first period of play. And BYU at the 20 would have to consider that good field position based on where they were the last time. Jensen, good ball handling, has a delay that freezes the backers and swings the pass out to Hamuli. And Hamuli will have a first down for BYU at the 35-yard line. Pick up a 15 yards. What makes this play is the fake on the counter. See this? He'll come back, he'll fake here, and then he'll roll out. Hey, Mooley just gets into the flat. Hey, Mooley was born in Tonga, raised in Hawaii, and in 1982, he was voted the outstanding scholar-athlete in the islands and had to go to New York to receive the award. You talk about a culture shock. <laughs> Stand up, quick pop, incomplete. Bellini never looked for the ball. Ball was behind him, and Mark took a hard lick from Tom Rotello, the corner on that side. Watch this. Now Bellini is driving off the defensive back, and the ball is coming right now to hit him between the ones on the back. And then he takes the lick and gets punished for it. 
Somehow there was a miscommunication there. He was trying to drive the corner Rotello off and then turn for the ball, but the ball was thrown before he had gone through all of that. Boy, Rotello is the all-time Air Force interception leader with 17 thefts. He's a quality player in that secondary. But he needs three more for He needs conference. three more for the conference all-time record. He led the nation in interceptions last year for underclassmen with eight. Second down and 10, BYU. Jensen looking to throw, goes down the sidelines, got a man over there. Coming out of the backfield, it is Parker, and he's got a first down at the 27-yard line of the Air Force. The second big pass play of the game for the Cougars. Boy, and this was set up nicely, too. They catch the Air Force in a zone. Again, it's play action, and he rolls on the waggle to the left side and stops and throws back. Well, in a zone, everybody was rotating to the side of the action, to the right side. And he came in and just slipped right into the seam. Parker ran a very nice pattern, and Rotella never recovered. Snow down the Cougars with a mild threat here. Give it back to Parker. Parker gets good blocking on the corner and will go out of bounds around the 15-yard line. That was a 38-yard pickup on that pass play, and that's the second longest Cougar completion. Here's a look at the sweep now. Well, see, he's so dangerous because he's so fast. He's a track athlete. He's always competed in track, a junior college transfer from Northeast Oklahoma. You see his body lean. He just looks like a trackster. 66 carries, 465 yards, six touchdowns this year. 3-3 three, three ball game inside Haymuli. Pick up two on that carry with time running out here in the first quarter of play. And if we continue to get a bright sky, we might even have shadows on the field from the sun any time now. After the first 15 minutes at the Air Force Academy, a 3-3 time. Well, here are some young folks with some plans for the future. Lavelle Edwards is recruiting early, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> sure is. Looks like some of my guys. <laughs> Second down and nine. BYU threatening from the Air Force 14-yard line. Into the middle, carrying Bruce Henson. Penalty flag is down. And the gain is down to about the 11 by Henson. But let's see about the flag. Uh-oh. Cougars caught holding. And the stats for the first quarter. You look at that left-hand column, you see one that's surprising. Only six yards rushing for BYU, 107 passing. So the passing game seems to be coming back for Lavelle Edwards. He told us in the pregame that he was worried. Now, before last week, BYU won 136 games, scoring at least a touchdown in a game. They only had a field goal last week. That's all they have now. There's the holding right there. You can see it. They wrap those big arms around old 87 Chad Hennings, defensive tackle. The 10-yard penalty brings that football back to the 24-yard line. Here it's second down. They've got to go just inside the five to get their first down. So they need 19 right now, and Jensen drops the throw. Had good protection, now runs away from it. Good cut, and gets down to the 10, fumbles the football, and the Falcons have recovered it. He was sandwiched. And the ball came bouncing loose, and an Air Force man came flying in, Kevin Martin, and scooped it up. Air Force is plus four in a giveaway takeaway. They always seem to have an interception or a turnover. Now, this is an outstanding play here by Jensen. He feels the outside pressure, comes back inside, and takes it upfield with an outstanding move, but he got hit from behind. The ball gets knocked out by Martin, and it's recovered by the Air Force Academy. Here it is again now. You'll see he gets nailed right here on the football. The helmet of Mike Gant just knocked it loose, and Martin recovered. And so BYU's turned away, and in at quarterback is D. Dowis. And what a place to put a freshman, 170-pounder from Royston, Georgia, D. Dowis, who they think is going to be the wishbone quarterback of the future for them. And he's in there now, taking the football first down at his own eight. And the gain was up to about the 10 with Johnny Smith. He is also from Georgia, from Fayetteville. So the 
There's a teenager in there at quarterback right now for the Air Force Falcons as they break the bone. Dallas rolls it out. Finds that crease, turns up field, and will come to the 12, close to the 13, where Richard Hobbs brings him down. A couple of weeks ago, Dallas played in his first varsity game. First play against Navy, got hit, came to the sidelines with a bloody nose. His helmet was cockeyed, and he looked up at the coach, and he says, Coach, I'll get it done. Fisher just said, Son, welcome to big-time college football. Well, I met him yesterday, and he doesn't look like he weighs 170 pounds. Interesting story there. You know, he was only 145 pounds when Fisher DeBerry was recruiting him. Thought he had the rickets or something. Then started feeding him. He's the only guy he knows that came out of basic training putting on weight. Third down and five and a half. Dallas is caught and brought down at the 10. Jason Buck made the play. The big senior Outland Trophy winner from St. Anthony, Idaho, brought him down. And so Air Force will have to punt. Ninth different rusher for Air Force in this ball game. As you look at the replay here of Jason Buck, look at the penetration. The body control once he committed himself to the runner. Mike O'Brien is deep from BYU. Mark Simon to punt it. Whoa, look at that thing hang up there. 64 45, and he drives him all the way back to the 35, and O'Brien returns to about the 43. So he has three punts 64, 45, and 55, and that one was into a light breeze. This is the best start that Brigham Young has had in this ball game. They possess the ball for this snap on first down at their own 44. The best previous spot was their own 24. And a quick pop. Jensen throws to 82 Chuck Cutler. Brigham Young losing the ball the last time. On a fumble at the 10. Jensen fires a bullet. It is caught by Bruce Hansen who had flanked out of the backfield, and he's going to have a first down for BYU at the 43. Number 55, Brian Rodoni, 6'5", 270, a junior from Los Banos, California, is at center right now. In mid-September, he had headaches. Doctors thought he had a brain tumor. They had brain scans and indicated tumor. But then he went to the Stanford University Medical Center. They had tests there, and they agreed he might have a cyst, but not a tumor, and he was cleared to play again. This is Hanson carrying the ball down the sidelines, tiptoeing. And they mark him out all the way down on the 23. Hanson standing down there in the end zone, holding the ball, looking back upfield, and they've got him marked out at the 23. Yeah, it was one of those deals where he heard the whistle, he knew he stepped out, but he wanted to carry out the play anyway, at least get to the goal line. But you'll see he comes around with a whole bevy of blockers out in front of him. And he goes to the sideline. Now, right here is where he stepped out. We get our vision block just a second by Hamuli, but it goes 19 yards. They mark it at 19 yards. They bring it back, and it'll be a first down for BYU. He just hit the chalk, too. He really wasn't more than an inch or two involved. And uh, penalty flags now as we've got break in the concentration along the line of scrimmage. It's against the Cougars. And it'll back him up five. Ladoni's story is certainly one of the more inspiring, motivational stories we've heard all year. He put the uniform back on for the first time this week since, as you mentioned, the second game, September 13th against New Mexico, when he took himself out with a False start on the offense. Still first down. You know, the doctors told him not to come back and play. And Ladoni and his parents, and they said, well, wait a minute. You know, we want to play. If there's nothing there, let's go. Let's do what he wants to do. Let's do what he loves. And that's what he's doing. First down and 15 for BYU. Ball is handed to Parker, and Parker finds some daylight and gets to the 20, just over the 20. Boy, you're right. He, he is, he's quick, isn't he? He is quick. Let's take a look at Radoni now. We said he just came back this week. Hadn't played since September 13th. But when he put the pads back on Monday and Tuesday, Lavelle Edwards said, gosh, he didn't lose any quickness. He hadn't lost his intensity. He still has the same blocking technique. Let's start him. Your secondary You watch out for our country. Ball just inside the 20. Second down, about seven for BYU. 3-3 three, three ball game, and this time it's the right side of the line. And BYU, remember now, has gone through a succession of quarterbacks this year, and each one of them's got his own sound and his own cadence. And we have a new center, as we just documented, in the fact that uh, we, we said right early in the ball game that the 
protection this year for BYU has not been what the coaches had anticipated, and part of that is because of the injury factor they had. Dead ball, false start on the offense, still second down. That's the sixth penalty, and the ball comes back to the 25. Mark Bellini is the man that's wide to the bottom of the picture. He's made one big catch today, second down. Ball going the other way. Jensen pulled it down, and behind the pulling guard and the big tackle, will run it back down to about the 22. It's quiet around the DeBerry household when the game is done. Fisher doesn't have a voice left. <laughs> yeah, but you heard him say, way to go, Ty. Ty Hankamer, that's, he's the guy that came out kept the outside containment that time and forced that sweep back inside to the pursuit. Now it is third and nine. Jensen's pass into the end zone. Bellini too long. Mark had gone toward the post, come back to the outside, and was open, but the ball was overthrown. Now it is fourth down. And the Cougars will send Chitty out. And have a try at the field goal. T will go down at the 29. It'll be a 39-yard try, and he puts it up there at the outside hash mark. He was born in Reading, England. Went to junior college at Snow, J.C. Kick is up, and it is good. He hooked it. And it sailed right back and stayed inside the uprights. And I don't see any yellow hankies, do you? But they certainly no. are talking. I saw the two officials standing under the goalpost, though, take a look at each other after the ball had gone over. They were uncertain. It may have been close. 25 clock, 25 second clock did not start. Field judge stopped the play before the ball was snapped. We have no play. Well, they Ooh, certainly got it in tough. within 25 seconds. The clock just wasn't running. That was the point. So he loses the field goal, and they'll have to do it again. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I tell you, that won't make Lavelle Edwards happy. He'll be telling that official, hey, what are you talking about? They don't, if they don't start that clock every time, they can take points off the board from us. So Leonard Chitty now will load it up again. Jim Edwards is the holder, number 18. He's a wide receiver. Jay Shumway is the senior that does the snapping. Yeah, see, they're going over to visit with Lavelle Edwards. Okay, so on that one play, he didn't see it operating. So he just blew the whistle and stopped the play. And the ball was snapped. Now they tell us if they're not out there. We didn't know that. Why penalize us? See, I told you. Lavelle says, why penalize us? We did everything we could. We lined up. We got it off in time. We kicked it through the uprights. That's all we can do. But the upper left-hand corner, you can see the two zeros. There's no 25-second clock. They didn't reset it. Let's see if you can see the officials. This is regular speed now, obviously. There's the snap, gets it in. That's about 14 seconds. But it's two zeros right there on the left-hand side. See, it never started the clock. Lavelle's right. Why penalize us? We did everything legal. That's the way the game of football is supposed to be played. Why bring it back and take the points off the board? Well, they'll go through the routine one more time and try to put it on the board for real. There's a penalty flag thrown against the Air Force. The kick is well long enough, and again, it is good by Leonard Chitty. And there's a penalty flag. Uh, I thought the Air Force man was across the neutral zone. And I'm almost sure that's what it is. It is offsides against the Falcons. And so finally, after two kicks, they get the field goal recorded, and BYU goes to the lead 6-3. Now watch Chitty here. He thinks 
that the penalty is on BYU. So he tries to drive that kick at Dia about six feet into the ground. But the penalty went the other way, and the Cougars have the lead. Long driving kick well beyond the field of play by Chris German, and the Air Force Academy will take over first down at their own 20. Ten minutes and 42 seconds to go in the first half, and BYU leading 6-3, and this is what the Falcons have done so far today in their possession. Air Force has had very good field position. That's been the difference, but they haven't been able to capitalize other than the field goal, and then you see Brigham Young had good field position only in the last two drives, last two possessions, really. Actually, they're only the last one but they've gone now a game and a half almost without scoring a touchdown, which is totally uncharacteristic of the Cougars of BYU. D. Dawes, the freshman, is out there at quarterback again. First down at the 20. This time, the first time he came into the game, it was first down at their own eight. Working out of the wishbone. And he's going down the line, delivers the pitch well to Manafo, and Manafo loses his footing as he makes his cut at about the 24. I'll tell you one thing, that freshman is not intimidated by defensive pressure because there was somebody right on his back when he delivered that soft, delicate pitch to Manafo on the dead run. Dow's played this offense in high school, too. He's quick, he reads well, he feels comfortable with the offense, and he is the Falcons' quarterback of the future, and the future is now. He says he is a little bit nervous. He was telling us yesterday, but he says he's pumped up, too, and he can't wait to play. BYU out to a 6-3 lead. We've had three field goals in the ball game. It is second down and six Air Force. Now it's coming this way with the ball. Delivers a bad pitch this time. And covering it, trying to cover it. Number 32, but I think BYU's got the ball. They do. Robert Krause couldn't get to the ball. And the BYU pursuit overpowered him and took the football at the 16. All right, we're talking about D. Dows, the freshman. Now, he's got all this talent, but he hasn't been able to harness it yet. He's still not under control. You see, he throws a poor pitch there, and it is a poor pitch. There's no other way to say it. It was poorly thrown. Consequently, there's the turnover, a freshman mistake. And now, BYU's got outstanding field position. Reagan Hanson recovering. It'll be first down for the Cougars at the Falcons' 16-yard line. And Jensen sets him up. With Parker and... Hey, Mooley, and this is Parker. And Parker coming to the boundary will get down to about the 10. Here's Al Troutwick. Keith, as you well know, every Saturday we work with a great bunch of men and women, but precarious seat in the house every week goes to this man, Evan Baker. As a matter of fact, in Waco, Texas, you may remember he was almost struck by lightning, constantly suspended from cranes like this. But on this freezing cold day with all the wind, Evan is just fine. Right, Evan? Right, Evan? <laughs> Evan? <laughs> Keith, uh, let me work on this for a moment. Hold on. <laughs> He'll be all right he gets on the first team, Monday. Second down from the 11, back to Parker. Parker to the 6, down to the 4. First down and goal, Brigham Young. He traveled a lot of miles to a lot of parts of this whole world with Evan Baker. He is a man of particular skill. Nice man. Boy, we have had a good crew all top to bottom all year round. It has been fun. First and goal, BYU at the Air Force four. Bidding for the first touchdown of the ball game. And they're gonna load up, play some power football now as Bellini comes out. This is the neighborhood where Haymuli gets a lot of work, but they stay with Parker. And Parker follows the blocking, goes to the one, and then he is bit backward on a hard hit by Steve Sigler. The uh, free safety from Houston, Texas. Sigler just saved the touchdown, but the story right now is Robert Parker, who seems to be taking over. Second leading rusher on this team, behind only Haymuli. High school, Parker played baseball, football, basketball. You can tell he's an all-around athlete, but look at the Sigler. Right at the goal line. Boy, I'm telling you, put him right on his back, prevented the touchdown. And it's second down and goal. Well, somebody started a little too soon in the backfield, but he got away with it. There was a little stutter step. Give the ball to Hamuli. Lucky puts it in the end zone, and that's the first touchdown in six quarters for Brigham Young. Watch Hamuli now. Close yardage, short, short distance. He's got those powerful legs. Look how thick his thighs are. He stays low to the ground with good body lean so as to carry the driving force when he meets the tacklers and bangs it into the end zone. It's like a whirling dervish. It's now a 12-3 ball game. 
And out for the extra point is Chitty. He gets this. He'll have seven points in the ball game. Snap was a little high, but handled well. And it is 13 to 3. Brigham Young with 8.16 to go in the first half. Kickoff will go to Tom Rotello. Again, he's coming out of the end zone with it. And comes flying up the middle and fumbles the football. And BYU has recovered it at the Air Force 30. Scott Peterson comes away with it. It looked as if Air Force would control this game when it first came out, but squandered some opportunities with good field position. Now BYU is taking over. It's been special teams. Watch this. It looked like it was going to be a big return, and then he loses the football. It just seems to squirt out of there. This turnover, again, gives BYU tremendous field position at the 30. Well, they just cashed one in for a touchdown, and they start first down at the Air Force 30, and Jensen rolls it the other way and will pull it down and run it. Inside the 20, a first down at the Air Force 19. Jensen is 6'2", 210. He was an all-around athlete out of the high school in Fillmore, Utah. Walked on at BYU, but he's a high jumper, track man, basketball. He can do a lot of things, and he has the courage to pull it down and run with it. Well, you're right about that. You know, he averaged 30 points a game in high school. Most valuable player in football. His team won the state title, and he was a finalist in the decathlon competition. They marked it directly on the 20 for the first down. Hamuli into the middle, a couple of yards to the 18. Army now jumping out to the big lead over Navy. And Nevada Reno, that's a pretty good football team coming out of Reno, Nevada. Keep with that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, with that carry, Hamuli now becomes. The rushing sets the record rush, rushing record uh, at BYU, which was previously held by Jeff Blank. Second down at eight for the Cougars. Jensen stands, throws to Bellini, and Mark dropped it. A little quick pop trying to get him one-on-one -on -one out there against Rotello, and the ball just squirted past his hand. Wearing gloves, as you can see, and fussing because he didn't pull the ball down. Third down. So let's see what they've cooked up after the huddle on the sideline. Jensen still got it. Gets it away quickly. Hey, Mooley, 10, 5, touchdown. Jensen was 14 and 34 coming into this game with four interceptions and only two touchdowns, but he's having a good ball game here this afternoon in complete control. Hey, Mooley now gets out into the flat. You're not going to find many secondary guys that can bring down Hey, Mooley. He's 216 pounds with some of the best leg drive I've seen. Chitty is in for the extra point drive. It's good. BYU has scored 17 points in the last three minutes and 38 seconds and lead 20 to 3. See 35 here? Just slipping into the flats. Nobody picks him up. Now, if you're going to stop Hamuli out there and you're a secondary man, you've got to hit him high. You've got to look for him around the numbers. You can't go down by the knees or the ankles and just dive at him. You have to go after him and you have to hit him high. I think she set a ticket to the Freedom Bowl. Here's the kick drilled into the end zone. Rotella watches this one go beyond the field of play. Come back to the 20. Seven minutes and four seconds to go in the first half. As you see the numbers on Brigham Young cashing in an Air Force turnover. The problem Air Force has had defensively playing a fine football game. Offensively squandered a few opportunities while down close. But turnovers, the story thus far. Dallas is in there at quarterback. So Fisher DeBerry is going to season him some today for next year. The 
Rides it off, puts it in the air. The pass is complete to Tyrone Jeffcoat. And he makes the catch going to his knees just over the 30, and that's a Falcon first down. Keith, you realize now that Air Force has had nine different guys run the football and four different passers. What they have to do now is just settle back into the basics, do what they've been doing well all year, and stick with it. First down from their own 32. They trail 20 to 3 here in the second quarter. Throwing it again, and it is underthrown, going the other way to Jeff Coat. And I think Dowis threw it a little quickly on that play. Women came to the academy in 1976. Although the Air Force Academy had its first graduating class just 27 years ago, 26 academy graduates are Rhodes Scholars, and that's impressive. There's also some Congressional Medal of Honor winners. Second down and 10. This is Dowis keeping it. And tiptoes up just beyond the 37 where Jeff Wilcox brings it down. Ben Martin, who has the longest tenure as coach at the Air Force Academy, works on the radio broadcast of the Falcon football game. Saw Ben before the game. Yep, he's still spending time on the golf course. Ball to the solid ball. Said his backswing is shortened up a little bit. <laughs> Call it to 38. Third down. And five. Dallas couldn't quite make the cut and turn inside. And uh, I thought it was Sean Knight, 77, that got it. Could have been uh, Richard Hobbs, the strong side linebacker, 57. Hobbs is a junior from Shelley, Idaho. And it brings up fourth down. Six minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half. O'Brien goes deep for BYU. Simons punts out of there, spins it downfield, high, a lot of hang time on it, bobbled some by O'Brien, but he's able to get away from the pursuit. Up to the 25-yard line goes Bruce Henson. BYU's football coming up second down at about seven. My feelings on the steroids, you know, the kids were told for years and years and years, particularly those trying to add bulk to play a combative game, to engage in all kinds of track and field activities, field events in particular, they were acceptable. And now they've decided they're not. It's a little like being told that salt's bad for you and then having somebody change their mind six months later. I think one of the problems you've got to get around to one of these days is to set down a basic standard of these drugs are not to be used, period, and be done with it. I remember the fiasco of Rick DeMont at the Olympic Games where he lost a gold medal because the medical people were all screwed up on it. So a lot of these people are taking drugs that are not in effect drugs as such because the connotation of drug carries a bad meaning. It's like the people at BYU. Percodan is what they're taking. It's a painkiller. You can become addicted to it. But as Lavelle Edwards said, they're not dope addicts. So it's a lack of uh, a solid foundation of what you can and you can't use. Jensen goes deep. Got a man wide open. Zayas. And Zayas hauls it in down at the 28-yard line of Air Force. And Brigham Young using the long pass effectively. Lavelle Edwards has to be somewhat happy now. He thought the passing game was leaving him. But Jensen comes in now, and it's the first time Jensen's been able to start a game and be comfortable in situations. And he goes to the fly pattern on his own, and Zayas is wide open. Zayas has outstanding speed. You know, Jensen has played now and mostly most of the year in mop-up situations or when the game was out of hand. He's in total control in this game now. And he's working from the 28-yard line of Air Force. Hand the ball off to number two, Bruce Hansen. And Hansen is going to lose maybe a yard or two on that as he slips trying to make the cut. John Steed again on the tackle for the Air Force. So the three longest passes of the season for Brigham Young have come in today's ball game. The first one was 57, second one was 38, and the third 43. Yeah. 
Second down and 12, and timeout call by BYU at 3 minutes and 39 seconds to go in the first half. I do get a little weary, though. I, I popped off a minute ago about the drugs, but I get tired of it because everybody's so quick to go to the scam aspects of it. In so many instances, it started, the whole thing started out as a misinformation from the medical side of our society. Well, there are so many problems now in NCAA and with the recruiting violations, minor rule infractions, unfortunate, and must be stopped. However, the number one nemesis does continue to be drugs, and I find very little sympathy for anybody that abuses themselves with drugs. It's true, but you've got to know the ground rules. You can't be waffling on them and changing them from generation to generation. Hey, the only drug problem we had at Maryland when I was there was we got drug all over the field a couple of times by <laughs> the opponents. The word is drag. That's bad grammar. <laughs> <laughs> 30-yard line, second down and 12. Just using that for effect. <laughs> Ruined a good line. <laughs> this is Hansen. Wants to throw it. Can't find anybody. And pulls it down and goes out of bounds just about the 30. It slid right up that yard marker. That's dangerous. Third and still 12 for Brigham Young. After that big pass play, they've been blunted by the Falcons. Jensen back, has Bellini down the middle, doesn't pick him up. Now he's got some daylight in front and trying for his first down, dives for it, and he's close. He's got it. He's got the first down at the 17. He's well composed, isn't he? Yep. Watch this, he just steps back and again feels pressure coming from the outside, but sees a wide gap open up and he sees the contained man fall to his knees. So right away he takes it to the corner, brings the ball up to freeze the linebackers and secondary men and carries it upfield. He's got good speed, he seems to be well composed. As you mentioned, he's an all-around athlete and he's using that athletic ability right now to tear up the Air Force defense. Stay with the ground game, Hanson. From the 17, still going inside the 10 and close to the 6. Give you an idea of how the norm has changed in the Brigham Young offense. They have run the ball 24 times here in this first half, thrown it 13 times. Now, over recent history, you would have expected that to be different, exactly opposite. But the quarterbacking circumstance has just simply not been up to Oh, I'll tell you something else too, Keith. BYU had only six yards rushing in the first quarter. Now they've opened things up, mainly because of Jensen, who's putting pressure on the corners, and they're up to 102. First and goal from the six. Hanson with the ball. Cuts back to the four. Pick up of two yards. Well, Air Force uh, gives up another touchdown here. They're looking at a pretty good-sized mountain to climb in the second half. Bruce, fly over. Bruce Hansen is an interesting story. He first started playing for BYU back in 1980. Played in 80, 81, finally left school, went on a mission, came back, and now he's playing again. His brother Reagan plays linebacker for BYU. Their brother Brian, a former Cougar linebacker. Second and goal inside the five. This is Parker. And Parker is belted out close to the three. Rolls up into the snowbank. So it's third and goal. Western Athletic Conference standing. San Diego State with a win last week over BYU has taken the title, which snaps the streak of BYU. The Bell Edwards team had won 10 straight conference titles. The interesting thing here is that Air Force plays one less game than everybody else by a fluke of scheduling. When I asked Fisher DeBerry, the head coach at Air Force, about it, he said simply that we're the new kid on the block and we came in and we didn't play as many conference games as everybody else. Palco now is walking without aid through the end zone so it looks like he's going to be all right. The junior out of Dearborn, Michigan. The ball is right around the four 
yard hash mark. BYU possesses it, third down and goal. Edwards in motion. Jensen rolls it. Penalty flag down. Pass into the end zone is complete. Pass is caught by Kevin Dobin, but let's see about the flag. You might have a hold here. Yeah. BYU will back up 10 yards. Touchdown wiped out. Have you noticed how quiet it's gotten here at Falcon Stadium? Yep. Seats get colder and colder and colder. The snow get closer and closer. Visibility has lessened considerably. Holding penalty on the offense. Still third down. Watch Chris Mattow, number 73, left side of your screen. See how his arm is wrapped around the outside of John Steed, the nose guard 81? That's holding. Ball comes back to the 14 where it is third down and goal. Your arms and your body has to stay within the framework. You can't take it outside. You can't wrap your arms around it. Jensen rolling it out after the act play action. Throws it back. Not a very good pass. And is it a... Nope. Not intercepted. One of the Falcons looked like he was going to come away with it, Mike Tolliver, but the senior from Albuquerque couldn't hold it and hit the ground. So that brings up fourth down, and in comes Leonard Chitty one more time. Sophomore mistake here by Jensen. We've been praising him now. He get, rolls to the right, and he stops and tries to throw all the way back into coverage. See, he throws it off balance, so he doesn't have a lot of zip on it. There's no velocity to it, and you see the three defenders there. Now here comes the fourth for the interception, and Tolliver can't hold on. And it'll be a 31-yard field goal try by Leonard Chitty. He's kicked to 43 and 39 yards. He's always hit two today. And this is from 31. He's got a pretty good-sized leg on him, and it's good. One minute and 46 seconds to play in the first half. And the Cougars now lead 23 to 3. 23. Air Force sends Rotello and Kraus deep. Germans kick into the end zone and no return comes out to the 20 Tom Rotella wanted to come so badly you could see him revving up his engine and then decided no Air Force early on had good field position you can see 47 and 45 but it's deteriorated some since that time and they're down now by 20 points surprises me a little bit that Air Force is staying with the freshman, D. Dallas. He's had some problems. He's turned the ball over and had some lost yardage. Jim Tamala moved the team fairly well early on. His pass is away and caught by one of the coaches on the BYU sideline. Incomplete. Andy Katoa who stepped into that middle linebacker position with the suspension of two starting linebackers for BYU. Putting the pressure on him. I'd hate to have to make my living throwing the football running at full speed. Pretty tough. Look at BYU's defense now. They're crowded right in there. There's Nobody playing center field for him. They go inside with it to Pat Evans, the fullback. And Evans gets out close to the 25. There wasn't anybody in the BYU secondary more than 10 yards off the ball. No, see, they're just challenging the freshman now. See that too deep zone again. They're rolling the corners up. He's dropped his straight back. There's more velocity on the ball, but Kraus is the intended receiver and has no chance to get to it on the sidelines. As you look at Dallas, 
Think about this. This time last year, he was finishing up his high school career with 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns. Now here he is, just one year later, as a freshman at the Air Force Academy on national television. Yeah, but think about all those math courses he's been taking. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the punt by Simon. Pretty good pressure on him, but he gets away another beauty. And O'Brien has to cover the ball back at the 26. That was a 49-yard punt. This is what Simon has done today. 64, 45, 55, 42, 49. I'll hire him. You know, I was just thinking, those young guys at the academy aren't allowed to speak to upperclassmen, so I guess the only time Dallas has to speak to these guys is in the huddle. I'd do a lot of check it off, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd really give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> Use all that 25 seconds. <laughs> 102, remaining in the first half. Gonna run it some now with Haymuli. And he picks up about seven on the carry. From the 26. Just beyond the 33. There's your time remaining. Tom Rotello, the senior defensive back for Air Force, having a few words with Richard Zass, the wide receiver at BYU that time. Fisher was about to throw a flag on him. Jensen loads it up, and it is too long. Intended for number 83, Kevin Doman. Rotello had the edge, was closer to the ball. Boy, Jensen has a strong arm, though. He just loaded up on that thing and threw the ball 67 yards in the air. Watch this. He's only a sophomore, hasn't played too terribly much when he, he has. It's been in high-risk times, but what a strong arm he has. Isn't that 67 yards, or did I miss a couple of those math classes? <laughs> <laughs> Third down and three. Give it to Hamuli, and he's got the first down, drops the ball, and covers it at the 41. That will be a BYU first down with 16 seconds remaining in the first half. Clock stops until the chains are reset in collegiate football. Once the chains are down, the clock is rolled. And we're inside 10 seconds now. Winner goes to the Freedom Bowl against UCLA and Anaheim. And the first half is over. And Brigham Young, big second quarter. They lead it 23 to 3. We're back on the Rampart Range, the Rocky Mountain country of Colorado, at the Air Force Academy, where Brigham Young leads the Academy 23 to 3. And here's one of the plays I thought that had a large part in turning things around in the first half of play. Rotello takes the ball in the end zone for the Air Force Academy, returning a kickoff, comes out to the 30. He's whacked the ball, comes popping out. BYU recovers it on the 30 and cashed it in. First of two Falcon turnovers that turned this game around. Air Force had been in pretty good control at that point. This an 18-yard pass play for a touchdown. Jensen to Hamuli. Amuli not only caught three passes, including this touchdown, but he had 25 yards rushing, which makes him now the career rushing record holder at BYU. The winner of this ball game gets an invitation to the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim, California, to play UCLA. Lavelle Edwards in his 15th year at BYU with a record of 136-42 coming in, and this year he had a string of 10 straight whack titles broken by San Diego State. Fisher DeBerry in his third year at the Air Force Academy, succeeding Ken Hatfield, who left here to go to Arkansas, with a record of 26-9 coming into this ball game. Remember that Air Force had won the toss, deferred to take the second half kickoff. German will kick off now, and Rotello or Kraus will return, depending on which side the ball's kicked, and it's kicked out of bounds. So they'll back up to the 30-yard line and kick it over and look at the individual stats. 
Well, Dallas, the freshman, had a tough time. He was one for four, 12 yards, put the ball on the ground a couple of times. You see the rushing and receiving there. Air Force used a lot of people in both categories. I think the story thus far has been Jensen, the young sophomore quarterback for BYU. Very good statistics. He's been in control. He's had composure, and he's been rifling the football. Look at Sigler. He's got 10 tackles. Terry Mackey's right behind him with nine, and Hennings nine. Air Force defense started out in total control of this ball game, and then all of a sudden, Jensen started putting some pressure on the corners, and things loosened up. Now we're ready for the second kick, this time from the 30. So the Falcon receivers will come out around the 5 to accept this one. That, that one's got some leverage in it, though, and it goes all the way back to the 1 to Rotello. Breaks it to the outside. And now just squares his shoulders and bangs away upfield as far as he can get, which is about the 25. You want to look at the left-hand column under BYU. First downs, 12 against four for Air Force. 119 yards rushing. Now all but about three of those yards came in the second quarter. 182 passing, 301 total yards. On the right hand of your screen, down near the turnovers, two costly turnovers for Air Force that turned into Cougar points. And starting at quarterback in the second half for the Air Force, Jim Tamalo started the game, but Dallas played most of the first half. But Tamalo is back in there now and is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Richard Hobbs, who's had a heck of a ball game for BYU. He brings him down for a loss at the 22, losing three on the play. Never gave him a chance to option the ball at all. Air Force uses the wishbone. Quite a history in that wishbone. It was a high school coach named Kaysen from Fort Worth, Texas that started the formation. He ran it for 16 years before Emily Ballard got a hold of it for Darrell Royal at Texas. Second down, 13 for Air Force. Ride it off to the fullback. Quarterback takes a whack from uh, Big Sean Knight, number 77. And the fullback, Pat Evans, going into the line, took a lick from uh, most of the defensive front for the Cougars. Just watch the pressure by the white jerseys. They come across now. Nobody goes with a fullback fake. They all go right to the quarterback, or the fullback give, rather. And it's third down, 11. Tamalo gets a good block to roll it out and throw, gets set and throws behind his intended receiver. And may have been a good thing because Tyrone Jeffcoat was well covered by Rodney Thomas. And the Air Force punting team comes on. Visibility is growing uh, less and less, which means we're getting closer and closer to snow. And the wind is picked up a bit now as Mark Simon, who had a big first half punting, will hit it into a little more wind this time. But he again gets good spinning action on the ball. And being a tail dragger, it kicks downfield and goes out at the 36. That was a 39-yard punt by Simon. BYU gets the ball for the first time in the second half. What the Falcon football team needs right now is a little hard-headed defense as BYU comes up first down at their own 36. And Jensen is in there at quarterback, gives the ball to Parker, and Parker is caught behind the line of scrimmage. The penetration came from number 81. John Steed, the nose guard, slowed him up, stopped the outside movement, turned him back inside, and uh, no game. Well, Steed did come hard, too. They were slanting to the right side, got into the gap, and he shot free, got the hand on the ball carrier, and did everything but pulling down. He got a lot of help on that, too. Outstanding play by Steed. Second down and 10. They go back to Parker again. Robert Parker, 6'2", 190. He is a senior, and his slashing speed moves him out to the 43-yard line. You know, Parker is the second-leading rusher on this team behind only Hay Mooley. Here's Mackey, staying low, fighting off blockers, putting his head in there, and making the play. From Libby, Montana. Third down and three. Jensen outside Bellini on the numbers first down BYU at the Air Force 49 ball is loose and incomplete. 
He had it as he was hit when rolling out of bounds by Craig Palco back in the game. He can't control it. This is a guy with over 100 career catches, including the game-winning score when BYU up in at Michigan two years ago. He's a quality receiver, but this one just gets away from him. Looks like a fumble to me. He's dropped three passes today. Now watch. He's got possession right here. You're right. It is a fumble. A fumble. He's just changing arms, trying to get it to the right side of him to get it away from the defender. Should have been a fumble. Sure. Bad call. On fourth down, in the punt, Pat Thompson. And Thompson kicks it away from Rotello, and Tom's going to let it go into the end zone. Just made it. So instead of having it down around the one or the two, the Falcons will get the ball back out at the 20. That was a 57-yard punt, the longest of the year for Pat Thompson. Here, the temperature, we'd be happy with a little rainstorm right now because it is getting down into the low 20s. Out here on the Rampart Range, and Dowis is back in there at quarterback. So Tamalo had one series. Now Dowis is in there, hands the ball to Manafo. Manafo trying to break it to the outside. And staying at home was Corey Rasmussen. And makes the defensive play for BYU. Gain on the play of approximately four yards. Second down and six coming up. The discouraging word is that there may be snow just south of here in Colorado Springs as it hits up here. I understand there's an Albuquerque low, which means bad news for this area. Snow is on its way. It's about, it's closer to seven yards and six on second down. Dallas back to throw it, goes deep with it. Jeff Coat, and it is intercepted by Jeff Wilcox as Wilcox stepped in behind Jeff Coat and hauled it in. Dallas this time, watch his head. After the play fake, he'll get back behind the tackle. He'll set and never takes his eye off the intended receiver. And he just throws into coverage. It's a zone coverage. Two defenders back there. And watch this. Jeffcoat doesn't have a shot. Wilcox intercepts it. That is the third Air Force turnover in the ball game. The previous two resulted in scores for BYU. The Cougars take over. First down at their 37. And here's Jensen rolling it out. Passes away. The pass is complete to the tight end, Darren Hendley. And Hendley will take it to the Air Force 43. First down, Cougars. Right now, Air Force's defense looks confused. It looks frustrated. They're running. They're putting pressure on the corners. Jensen's doing a marvelous job of running this offense. Here they have the cross action, the play away. Now he rolls right, which he does so well. We told you that in the pregame. And then throws back across his body to Hanley. And Hanley just splits the seam and picks up the first down. Total control right now. They're dominant. Jensen, a little delay. Gives to Robert Parker. Parker back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all he'll get out of it. And here's Al Trotwick. Okay, Keith, just time for a little fun. I'm in a daredevil kind of mood. Just outside the stadium here with my official ABC snow saucer. Let's see what we can do. Who's going to stop you, Al? Mother Nature. <laughs> a little tougher than the F-15, but we're still alive. Back to you. <laughs> John Borgia is the injured player for BYU. John Borgia. I had a funny line on Borgia that I was going to tell you, but I hate to do it now that John's shaking up on the play, but looks like he's going to get up and be all right. And it's this, that uh, Borgia, a direct descendant of two popes, sometimes blocking for Mike Young, who is the great, great, great grandson of Brigham Young. So John right now looks like the, he might have an injured ankle and he's walking off the field. 10 minutes and 51 seconds to play in the third period. It is second down. And 10 for BYU. Back goes Jensen to throw. Pressure from the outside. And he got away. Can you believe it? He may score. Oh, what a block. Falls down. Lost his footing. He's in the open field. And he'll growl for weeks about that. He fell down, down on the six-yard line after having a clearing block from Richard Zayas. 
Watch his escape dimension. We talked about his quick feet in the pregame. Gets all kinds of outside pressure here from Kevin Martin, but then squirms up free. Now here comes the block by Zayas. Watch, it's on Rotello. As he comes to the left side here, there's the block. And now he's free. There's not a soul in front of him. He's putting his hands up for the touchdown, and he tripped over the line. Well, he was a couple of paragraphs away from headlines and a couple of yards away from the touchdown. Oh, he'll get some ragging for that. It is, however, first and goal BYU at the Air Force 6. Hey, Mooley. To about the three and a penalty flag. Look out. Look out for the old hold call here. Yep. Boy, I'm telling you, Jensen's going to hear from head coach Lavelle Edwards about this. Don't ever put your hands up until you have scored the touchdown. You may hear from his grandmother about this. Well, he was spinning and turning and got out of the pocket. He's got those quick feet and gets a tremendous block. Zayas just levels Rotello right there. Boy, you can't ask for anything better than that. Look at this. There now. Had his hands up in the air. I think it just, he got top heavy. I remember one time a pro football game, and I won't tell you who it was, but uh, he was carrying Holding the ball on the offense. into the end zone. Still first down. Out all by himself and was celebrating, dropped the ball back over his shoulder, and the opposition came along, picked it up, and went the other way. <laughs> That's the ninth penalty in the ball game against the Cougars, and Jensen goes back to throw from the 16, and... Flush gets back to the 15, where Chad Hennings locks his legs. If they don't score here, there will be a small lecture on the sidelines. Yeah, absolutely. Here comes the messenger, that's Zayas. Now they pull him back. And he'll go to the top of the picture now as a double wide with Bellini. On second down. And goal from the 15. Jensen's pass is underthrown. Thrown behind Robert Parker. Some athlete, anybody that scores 30 points a game in basketball in high school is the MVP of his football team and a finalist in the decathlon championship can play almost anywhere, anytime. He's a sophomore. He'll learn. Third and goal from the 15th. Takes off again and gets to the 10 where it will be fourth down, and Leonard Chitty will be back into the ball game. Now, let's see. Chitty's kicked two field goals and three field goals and two extra points, so he's got 11 points already today. His field goals were 43, 39, and 31. And here comes uh, Robert Jensen to the sidelines for some conversation. <laughs> well, Chitty and Lavelle, he'll do it low-key and quiet, but he'll do it. Jensen has 203 yards passing and 70 rushing. 27-yard field goal try. Hooked it, missed it. And so they don't score. They have a wide open field. Jensen falls down on the six. First and goal on the six. They hold and they're turned away. First down from the 20. Dowis comes back to start this series at quarterback and Pat Evans carries it and picks up one yard. That's a look. It looks like an apartment house or something, but believe it or not, that's the press box section of Falcon Stadium here at the Air Force Academy. But behind, this goes pretty much straight up to the top of the mountain. Second down and nine. Falcons offense has been shut down since the middle of the first quarter. Dowis got that pitch away despite the fact that he was absolutely leveled by Brad Cahoon and a penalty flag goes down as Thor Salanoa level the quarterback. See about the penalty. It's a face mask call. It's against BYU on the ball carrier and it's going to give 
Air Force a first down. And it's been a while since they've had one. Face mask, five yards on the run. First down. If anything happens in this drive now where Air Force can get some points, we'll think back to that possible touchdown run by Jensen when he stumbled on inside the 10-yard line. Instead of 30 to 3, it is now 23 to 3. And a touchdown here could tighten things considerably midway through the third quarter. First down at the 32. Monafo comes up into a slot position. And Dowis delivers it to him. Cannot shake, however. Number 24, Shane Shumway. Shane is from Blanding, Utah. Army beat Navy today, 27 to 7. So the Commander-in-Chief trophy will go to West Point this year. Another service academy team that uses the wishbone. Jim Young put it in an Army and it's been very successful. Second down and four and a half for the Falcons. They have five total first downs in the ball game. Dowis pitches to Monaco, gets a block on the corner, gets around the corner, and picks up a first down up at the 46-47 yard line. Corey Rasmussen pushes him out. Al Troutwick. Keith, without a doubt, this is the highest seat in all of college football. Elevation about 7,000 feet with the height of this press box. Not much happening up here except the referee sound and the music for the entire stadium but definitely one of the best seats in the house and the highest in all of college football. Even higher than you and Timmy. Back to you. Did you walk up? I could hear you huffing. Or is that puffing? On first down from the 47, Dallas hands the ball away to Johnson, Greg Johnson, and Greg runs, runs smack dab into Thor Salanoa, and he goes down. How many times have you heard us talk this year about backside containment? When the play goes away from you, you've got to stay at home. You can't run yourself out of the play. You have to wait for anything coming back. Now, Salanoa just does that. He comes up and he makes the tackle. Now, this is what the moaning and groaning was about. Well, the play stopped, but he took him down to the ground, and when he was down, he got a little bit tough down there, started putting his head back into the dirt. Air Force guys didn't like that. Loss is back near the 43, four yards, so it's second down and close to 14. And Dowis hands it inside, carrying his Evans, and it's always bat in the heavy traffic, and he gets it back to the 46. Watch this. This is the end of the play now, Salanoa. This brought Fisher to Berry off the sidelines, and he's got a hand on the face mask and just drives him into the dirt. They wanted an unnecessary roughness penalty and didn't get it. What was it, Ben Dreith one night said, well, he had him down there, and he was giving him the business. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Thor. Thor, Salanoa. Giving him the what for. Air Force has only gotten two rushing first downs. Ball is resting at the 46. It is third down, 11 for the Falcons. Now it's rolling to Jeff Coates' side and will not get the pass away. Number 47, Andy Katoa makes the tackle. The loss is way back, and it brings in the kicking team. Watch 47, bottom left hand of your screen, Katoa. Now he just kind of skates down the line of scrimmage. He's running with Dallas, the quarterback, and comes up and just throws him to the ground. Good pursuit, inside out. Oh, first bad kick of the day by Mark Simon, but he gets a good roll on it, and by the time the ball starts bouncing, his teammates are there, and the Falcons watch the ball roll inside the 20, winds up a 44-yard punt. That is on the BYU 18. Me too. 18-yard line. Line of scrimmage, and that'll do it for Bruce Hansen. I really would. I think he's got a chance to... Leon Hart wanted it at an end position in 49. And, of course, the, uh, the original winner of the Heisman was an end. So... Uh, it's possible. I, I agree with you. Well, right Keith now. Jackson has also gotten the attention of the nation as a tight end, and he's in a wishbone attack. If he was at a passing on a passing team like Miami, huge numbers. Look out. Second down and ten. Sideline pass. Rotello is right there. 
And we've got a little emotion involved in that tackle as Chuck Cutler is thrown down. And Rotello, frustrated, was giving him the business, and it probably goes back to Salanoa a little while ago. I think that's an extra, excellent observation. You know, he's got some frustration built up on what's been happening, but he's a quality player. This is the guy who led the nation last year in interceptions for underclassmen. Confidence out there. He knows how far to troll without losing the line. Say what? Gambles. Third because down. His limitations. Third down and six. Jensen's got a lot of time, but nobody to throw it to, and now he's got a chance to run for his first down, and he gets it at the 30. Well, he's big enough, 6'2", 210. And he's got that little wiggle in him that really doesn't give you the clean shot. All great running backs have that little. Uh, O.J. was as good as anybody at not giving you much of this body to, to attack. You might get him down, but you didn't get that clean lick on him. But all the great ones have that. First down at the 30 for BYU. They lead 23-3 with 3.15 to go in the third quarter. Jensen throws it short. Look out. Look out. The tight end, Handley. And probably doesn't have the foot speed of a suspended Trevor Molini. I think Molini might stick that one in the end zone. But Handley makes it a big play down to the 23. Watch this, though. Jensen just drills the football a little bit low. Hanley picks it up, makes a nice catch. And all of a sudden now, it's a zone defense. And when he's by the linebackers and the two deeper split, and he's wide open to take that seam down the middle, right down the alleyway. He all does lumber, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Covered a lot of real estate that time. First down at the Air Force 23. Here comes Parker. And they'll give him progress to near the 16, where Falco and Ziegler bring him down. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter now. Talking about Jensen not offering his body up to the tackler, I'll tell you another thing that I've been able to see today that he has, and that's that tremendous vision and feel back in that pocket. He knows where the pressure's coming from. He knows when to release and take the ball north and south and take it upfield and try to scramble with it. Make it the 15, second down, two. Jensen, that might have been a broken play. It looked like he wanted to give the ball to Parker, but Parker was not in position to accept it. And so Jensen just put his helmet down and went to the 11 for the first down. Combination of poor defense and the ability of Jensen to turn a negative into positive yardage. They didn't have containment. It was a broken play. He turned it up and still got a couple of yards in the first down out of it. Sweeping to the right, Parker. Behind the line of scrimmage. Contact is made by a diving Spiewak and Terry Mackey. Steve Spiewak, senior from Highland, Michigan. You know, Mackey's a bigger player than you might think because he flies all over the field. You'd think he might be a little guy, but he's not. He's 6'2", 235. Terry Mackey said if he was born 100 years ago, he would have been a trapper in the mountains or in Alaska. Now he says he wants to join the special forces, wants that exciting duty, doesn't want a desk job. This is Haymuli to about the eight before they wrestle him down. I don't agree. I think it had been a gunfight. Inside a minute to go in the third quarter, and let's pause five seconds here for our local stations to identify themselves. Well, one thing's for sure, whatever he would have been, he's a strong individualist who wants to be where the excitement is. He probably played the piano in a bar room with a shotgun in his boot. <laughs> Third down from the eight. And they need close to eight. Jensen rolling it out. Gets away from one. Gets it back to about the seven. And it'll be fourth down, and the field goal unit will be summoned. In the final seconds of the third quarter, they'll almost surely let this quarter expire before they try the field goal. 23-3, BYU. 
We go to the final quarter of play in this ninth meeting between the Air Force Academy and Brigham Young University. Leonard Chitty is on the field for a chip shot field goal shot, trying to enlarge the score. He scored 11 points today. He has kicked three field goals of 43, 39, and 31. Missed from 27 wide. There's a light breeze that he is kicking into. This is a 25-yard try, and it is blocked. Blocked by Kevin Martin, linebacker, Air Force. Took it right on the numbers. And the Cougars are turned away. Air Force does this as well as anybody. Mackey's blocked three kicks in his career. Here comes Martin from the outside, just extends and lays out completely and blocks it. Now watch the kicker, Chitty. See if he has any extra steps. No, he gets off his usual time. He had to three-step up, kicked it. Martin was just there in a flash. That's great penetration from the outside. It looked as if they almost jumped he got across so fast. But the key to it is Martin is six foot three, and he extended out completely. Top of your screen, and knocks it away. So BYU has had two scoring opportunities. They've missed a field goal and now had one blocked. And they could well have had touchdowns in both instances, had only themselves to blame for it. And Dowis is in there at quarterback as the Air Force offense continues to struggle, and he picked up about a yard. You saw Martin trying to get the crowd back into it. They know they have a quarter left, but if you look at the statistics, BYU has been dominant since the first quarter. 452 total yards, only one turnover, three for Air Force. Then you see the one place where they have been deficient has been 10 penalties for 65 yards for BYU. Johnny Smith is in the backfield now for the Air Force, number 37. Carrying the ball is Kraus, and Robert Kraus, the sophomore from Greenwood, Indiana, will have a first down for the Falcons as he gets it to the 34. Kraus had carried the ball only 30 times prior to this game for 169 yards. Some backs do that in one game. His dad played football at Nebraska. He was an outstanding wide receiver in high school. There you have it, two carries, 14 yards, seven yard average today. Dallas throws it and throws behind the intended receiver, Mark Monafo. Monafo was available to him out there for a four or five yard pickup, not a big gain. And he couldn't deliver it. Monafo, of course, the right halfback, but he's the team's second leading receiver. Had 12 catches coming into this game with 162 yards. I'm surprised they haven't gone back to the halfback option pass that was successful for him early. Now, you say you can only run a play like that once a game. But the way that BYU's bunching up, it may be successful. Well, uh, they got one man playing as much as 10 yards off the ball. This is Kraus. And he'll get a couple of yards, and that's all. That stops the clock at 13.40. And some of the folks now are starting to leave Falcon Stadium to get on the road before the snow comes. You know what BYU is doing and doing well is taking that entire field lengthwise and they stretch those plays out using Johnny sideline that extra person at sideline to help them and they yep. stretch that play out and just run them out of bounds. Is that Al? No. Al wants more of it. Third down. Call it seven. Dallas. Delivers the ball to Monafo, and by the time he delivered it, all commitments had been made as far as offensive blocking was concerned, and there was simply no place to go with it. Jason Buck and Richard Hobbs, the defenders. In to punt, Mark Simon. His shortest punt of the day, a 39-yarder. This is with the wind. And backing up and taking it at the 11-yard line is Mike O'Brien. And he gets it back to about the 18 to 13 minutes to go in the ball game. BYU owns the ball at their own 18. Last two possessions now, they've driven down to the Air Force 10 and failed to score. 
And carrying the ball, number 43, Robert Parker. And he moves it out to a close to the 29. Here's Al. All right, gentlemen, I have a very dangerous mission for you. I need four volunteers, five volunteers. All right, it could be dangerous. What I want you to do is go kidnap the BYU Cougar and bring him back alive. Yes, sir. Okay. Gentlemen, good luck. Thank you very much. Now, look, we're trying to get out of town. What is this you're creating? He's dangerous. Blame the guys in the truck. First down from the 29. Handoff is inside. Good offensive line surge, and Hemule will pick up about four. There they go. Somebody's called a sheriff already. John Clune, Colonel John Clune, the athletic director. To watch out here, John. John's a Naval Academy graduate and the athletic Look director <laughs> here at the these, these guys will be walking off penalty hours for months and Al <laughs> Trotwig will be back home. Yeah, he went that way. <laughs> Second down and five. Diving into the middle is Parker and they're going to hold him about two yards short of the first down. Aha. Uh -huh. The Cougar is on the other side, and he has an Air Force person in his possession. You know what I think that was? I think that the duty officer spotted him and said, get back in the rank. <laughs> As a penalty, they're going to keep out Trotwig here for a week. <laughs> Third down and two now for BYU. They lead 23-3, to final quarter of play, 11-20 to go. Parker bounces outside and picks up the first down as he gets to the 49. It was cold out there today, though, about 60, 61 degrees. This is Parker going the other way. And he's down close to the Air Force 45-yard line, which should be a pickup of at least five yards. And those two safeties, Sigler and Palco, again, joining forces to make the tackle. Good lick by Palco, 41, though. He came up in support of the run and made just a picture-perfect tackle. They bring blankets. I, I saw somebody coming in here with a sleeping bag, and I can understand why. Oh, this is great weather, though. This is refreshing. Warm way to watch the game. Second down and five. This is Hemuli. Trying for his first down. Comes up a yard short. 25 second clock did not move on that, but nor yeah, did the game clock. Nor did the game clock. Well, it's running now. That's because Lavelle Edwards got their attention and said, hey, look, we want to get out of here sometime. We got a pretty good lead. Let's move that clock. <laughs> <laughs> got to go home and sharpen his golf clubs. He has a chance right now to go to Southern California. Sigler has 14 tackles in this ball game. Steve Sigler, the free safety for the Air Force Academy. They need to run about 20 seconds off the clock. Man. Guy Gibbs will get them squared away. They are going to run some time off the clock because they didn't move the last time. There's a fellow we were talking about, Steve Sigler, senior from Houston, Texas, 6'1", 185, and he had, has 14 tackles to this point. A safety that can run to the football has confidence. He knows he won't get beaten. Deep, he reads his keys and comes up and runs the board. 14 tackles, that's quite an afternoon. Impressive statistic. Well, they've run a little off. Now they're back to 10-11. So they've run five seconds off. Huh? Take what you can get, right? All right, it's third down and a little over a yard from near the 42. 
looks like, sounded like he checked off, giving the ball to Hamuli, and he will have the first down and then some. As he rumbles down to about the 30, and something going on in the stack, and the penalty flags are flying as Zayas and Rotello get into it again. I don't think the flags involved uh, the ball carrier, but involved Zayas and Rotello, and they've been uh, throwing jabs all afternoon. Here it is again, hey, Mooley now. He's a first-team all-conference player the past two years. BYU's all-time leading rusher. You can see the power. They bring him down finally. But here's the aftermath now. This is what drew the penalty. E.J. Jones made the tackle. And look at this. Zayas, I think he was a little bit upset since somebody came down in the back of him. So Rotella just went after him a little bit more. And the penalty goes against the Air Force and moves the football down to the 15-yard line. Those two have been jawbone to jawbone today. <laughs> Throwing hooks all day. Bellini and Doman go wide to the top of the screen. And Jensen hands it inside. Carrying is Hanson. And he gets it just over the 10 and here's out. Keith, it seems a few years ago, uh, some of the Air Force cadets went over and ripped the head off the Cougar. They're pretty sensitive now to attacks on the opposing team's mascots here, but the Air Force did get their man eventually. I paid the price, 10 push-ups. Uh-oh. Back to you. Can you do 10 push-ups? Yeah, I did. <laughs> did 10. That's more than the cadets have had to do today because they've only had to do three because they only have three points so far. BYU's threatening again. Second down and five from the 10. Hey, Mooley. And he'll rumble for a first and goal at the two. And the Air Force defense now getting tired because they've been out on the field most of three quarters. BOIU has run for 260 yards in the game. They have passed for 255. Okay, Hey, Mooley. From Hawaii. He's a load. Is that government issued? What's that? The face mask that cadet had. Emoli is hit behind the line of scrimmage but keeps on turning and will not lose any yardage. There was a good defensive pop by one of the Falcons as he came flying through the crack and almost got him, but Emoli is a tough guy to knock off his feet on first contact. He's a traffic runner. He is. You know, he's been BYU's key rushing threat over the years. This season, he's been given even more responsibility carrying the football because the passing game has not been as dominant as it has in the past, at least prior to this game. Second down and goal from the two. This is Parker. He's not going to get there. Just as he started his lean trying to dive in, Falco and Siegler met him. That's quite a duo, isn't it? It's like a tag team. Watch Parker now. Parker thinks he's got the touchdown. He's got the corner made. The cutoff man gets cut off right here, see? But here comes Siegler. He's first. Then his partner in crime comes in. Yeah, Siegler stopped his momentum, and Falco, Falco just finished him, him off. It's like yep. a tag team. They work well together. <laughs> That's right. Ball is on the one. That's the 50th running play in the ball game for BYU. 50 running plays. And Jensen, Bob Jensen, doesn't like the circumstance and will spend the time out. The Cougars have two remaining. Third down and goal for BYU. Quarterback Jensen. And they're not going to give it to him. He put his helmet in there and tried to slide through over the right side behind uh, Lott and White in the center. Rodoni, and he couldn't get in. So it is fourth down. Excellent goal line defense that time, no matter what happens on this next play. The down lineman penetrated, established a new line of scrimmage back in BYU's uh, backfield, and then the linebackers 
just penetrated and forced things to pile up and they couldn't go up and over to the goal line. Robert Parker comes in from the sidelines bringing a play. They give it to Hamuli and he does not make it. They stuff him on the one and it's Brady Glick as much as anybody who made the hit. Green Springs, Iowa, a senior. Number 93. Boy, that's an outstanding play, too. This is a guy who's dedicated this year to his grandfather who passed away this summer, keeps his grandfather's picture in the locker, touches it before every game, goes out and plays hard constantly, practicing games alike. Look at him again. Look at the penetration. They just stopped it. They came in underneath and just submarine the BYU line and made the play. All right, the Falcons will try to wiggle out here and get a little something going in the waning minutes of this ball game. 6-4 to play. Dowers pitches it outside, carrying his Greg Johnson, and he comes up to the four-yard line where Shane Shumway brings it down. The second half possessions for the Falcons. Almost a tango offense in the second half. BYU, as we told you, has been down close three times. They missed the field goal, had one blocked, and then turned the ball over on downs on the Air Force One. Second down and seven for the Falcons. Pass is away. Pass is caught. Good catch. Fine catch by Frank Martini. Rockland, California. Outstanding play by Dallas, too. He had to throw across his body and square up. But look at Martini now. Drives the defender off. Good defensive play, though, by Thomas. Thomas is right on his back. Martini just goes up and catches it at its highest point and pulls it in. Good concentration. And it's a first down for Air Force at their 14. The Martini brothers, Ralph and Frank. Dallas passes away again. Pass caught this time by Tyrone Jeffcoat, and he'll pick up about nine yards on that play, where he's brought down by Shumway. Tackle by number 24, Shane Subway. Tyrone doing a little politicking with the line judge over there, trying to get a little extra yardage on it, but. No deal. Second down and one coming up. That's his 20th catch of the year. He averages 20 yards per catch. Air Force started moving out on this possession from their own one. Johnny Smith carries it into the middle, and he'll have the first down up around the 26. Pitch it outside. And not much, maybe a yard. While the professional football folks continue to work, I'm going fishing. And Tim uh, Grant is going to spend some time trying to scout around and see who's got two left shoes to trade for one right shoe. Can't believe I brought two right shoes to Colorado. Just, w just waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> and you won't let me forget that, will you? Never. Second down, call it 10. Throw it as far as he could throw it, and it's out of bounds incomplete. I'll tell you what, if you'd have put on those two right shoes and walked down the hall more than 20 yards, I was going to paint your nose, get you a funny hat. Ah, uh, my two best feet forward. Got me a new pair of shoes out of it. <laughs> Told the guy just wear the boxes, keep the shoes. <laughs> it is third down and ten now. It's been a great year, Keith. It's been a fun year working up here with you, and I Thank appreciate you. all your help. It. it has been fun. Whole crew, it's been fun. Night is after Dallas. Dallas fumbles the football, and BYU has recovered it. Ball in the hands of Reagan Henson, the sophomore linebacker at the Air Force 37. Four turnovers for the Falcons. Just typ typifies the day here, Dallas, the freshman.
drops, looks and sees he has a receiver and then pulls it back, tries to get some yardage and you can see the strip take place there. He just reached in and, and pulled it away to Salanoa. Salanoa's played a fine football game. I love that name, Thor. Thor Salanoa. Came out here in Hawaiian dress yesterday. That is Saron, though, yeah, I can I can visualize him standing on the highest point above the fire pit. Kilauea. Watching it roll, making new earth. First down from the 37. And BYU stays with the ground game now against a tired Air Force defense with 340 to play. You see, your legend spreads, my man. Boy, it's easy to set a trend these days. <laughs> it's easy to be a trendsetter. You set styles everywhere you go. Boy, if guys can paint their hair orange and wear sunglasses, I can wear two right shoes. All right, go ahead. Let me see you call this next play. <laughs> Second down. Hey, Mooley has the ball, and he won't get much on that. That's about the line of scrimmage, and that'll do it. Nevada Reno beats Tennessee State. Tennessee State was right around the very top of the rankings for a long time in 1AA. Nevada Reno, late in the middle of the year, I guess it was, started their move up and finished the season in the regular season undefeated. And now rolling along in the playoffs. Of course, down the road, there's some tough nuts waiting for them, like Arkansas State, for one. From the 33-yard line, BYU's ball, third down and six. Time remaining, you see there. This is Robert Parker. And it's a first down for the Cougars at the Air Force 25. Game, uh, I know it sounds a little silly, but looking out across the horizon and wondering how, how deep the snow's gonna be before we get to the Denver airport, I figured you might as well go have have a little fun because there may not be much left the rest of the night if it gets to snow and heavy. It is getting dark. The wind is blowing. Temperature dropping. I don't think they're expecting a whole lot of snow, though, because they think it might start to clear again more after that. Well, they were saying one to three inches. That's not much. Depends on who's doing the shoveling on the driveway, right? From the 25, stay with the ground game. This is Hanson. Carrying for BYU, and he's going to have close to five on that carry. Headed to the Freedom Bowl. Bill Edwards came in here yesterday, had a lot of concerns. I think some of those have been erased now. He saw some fine play out of some young talent here this afternoon. But it's a different kind of a Good BYU job. football team that we have seen in times past. Out of necessity. And it also tells you something about, one, the quality of athletes have got over there who can make the adjustment, and two, it just confirms one more time to me the quality of coach uh, and coaches uh, under Lavelle Edwards. Well, he also told Long us he... Long felt he's one of the best in the business. He told us he will not abandon that passing game, though, and he's going to recruit to get passers. He's one of my favorite people in coaching ranks at any level with 53 seconds to play in the game. With a minute remaining, BYU has this ball game in hand. There's been no scoring in the second half. The Cougars were down to the Air Force 10 twice. Field goal was missed, field goal was blocked, and then they turned the ball over in the fourth quarter on the Air Force 1. A great defensive stand by the tired Falcon defense. BYU still moving the football, staying on the ground. They've got all the points they need to get the bid to go to the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim to play the UCLA Bruins in the postseason. So uh, the Cougars will have their string of 10 consecutive conference championships broken by San Diego State, who beat them last week 10 to three. But they will continue on in postseason play. This win also puts them firmly into second place in the Western Athletic Conference. The winner of this game is second place. That goes to BYU. So that's not a bad record. Ten conference titles and one second place. Are we all right on offense? 
They're just short of the first down, the most valuable players in the ball game. For Brigham Young University, Bob Jensen, the quarterback, threw for 255 yards today, ran for 87 yards. And Steve Siegler, the free safety, had 17 tackles today for the Air Force Falcons. And their respective universities will receive $1,000 for their general scholarship fund from Chevrolet. Continuing to support college athletics. Fourth down and about a foot. And the clock is running now, and they are letting it run right on down into the final seconds. Finally, Jensen takes the snap at two seconds to go. Gives the ball to Roger Price, a freshman from Vista, California. He picks up a first down, and now they have to stop the clock under the rules to move the change. And so you'll have, uh, you may not even have another snap, because once the change are put in place, then the clock is wound, and uh, it has been wound already. So just a matter now of watching five seconds tick off. And the Brigham Young Cougars have defeated the Air Force Academy Falcons by a final score of 23 to 3. This, their ninth meeting since the two became Western Athletic Conference competitors. And BYU has won eight of the nine. And now let's join our trophy. 23, Air Force 3. I know what you're thinking now, having uh, won this game in convincing fashion, going to the Freedom Bowl and having survived a pretty tough week. Well, we're very, uh, very pleased with the players because of the adversity we've had. Uh, a little bit of uh, all year long, but this past week and having to come back and play as hard as it did tonight, I was very pleased with you. Are you surprised at all that you dominated Air Force in this fashion? A lot of people thought it would be closer than it was. Well, yes, I thought it'd be a, a, a very low-scoring, close uh, football game, and uh, as it was, uh, we got our offense going. Uh, Helped. I think Bob uh, Jensen came in and gave us a little bit uh, different dimension and made a big difference. But defensively, we just played exceptionally well all afternoon. And of course, having your wax string broken now by uh, San Diego State, you can come back with a different attitude, a different workman like attitude next year. Right. You know, and I think this helps to restore confidence and uh, get us going for next year. And got a good young quarterback there. We've got a lot of good receivers coming back. And so things look pretty good. Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck in the Freedom Thank Bowl. Thank you very much. Okay. Man. Coach Lavelle Edwards, Keith. They start off next year with Pitt at Provo, TCU, and Texas. So they will get tested early. Final score, BYU 23, Air Force Academy 3.